Hello everyone, welcome to another Quad Education Test Prep Fundamentals video. My name is Tom and today we're talking about a math topic that in my opinion is a little bit overtaught and overcomplicated when it's instructed in high school. That topic is the unit circle and what I'm going to try to do here today is present it to you in such a way that it's very concise and very easy to understand. So let's see if I can do that. All right, we're talking about the unit circle and I mentioned up top that I feel like this is overcomplicated and overtaught in schools. And by that, what I mean is I think that when this is spoken about and instructed in, in schools, there's good intentions, but I think also that there's too much detail that's provided for something that sort of is intuitively sensible when you look at it the right way. So let's see if I can prove that here. So first of all, to review, we're gonna talk briefly about Sokotoa. Um, a long ago previous video on trigonometry, go back and watch that one, but here we're just going to say remember that uh, the sine of an angle, and remember we use theta here for whatever reason is equal to the opposite of that side divided by the hypotenuse, the cosine of an angle is just the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, and the tangent of the angle is just the opposite divided by the adjacent, and remember, for all of this, we're really just talking about a right triangle. And that's really the important thing to remember as we go into unit circle is we're just talking about right triangles here. At the end of the day, that's the fundamental concept. So say we're right here with that angle to the right side of the right triangle. This would be our opposite. This would be our adjacent. This would be our hypotenuse relative to that angle. And so now that we've refreshed our trigonometric concepts, all we're going to do is put a circle on a coordinate plane and see what happens. So basically, you can see here my coordinate plane, standard x and y, and I have this circle centered around the origin. And basically, you know, what would happen is if I drew a line from the center to the outside, which we would just call the radius, that would certainly be the same all the way around the circle, which certainly makes sense because that's what a circle is. It's that same distance from a given point and a given, dis and a given distance from that point. So there's our circle. And you just saw that as I spun that around, and theoretically I kept this the same distance the whole way, I went 360 degrees, uh, which is to say I traveled the circumference of a circle, which is 2 pi r, and I arrived back at the same spot. Now, what would happen if I were to land on a specific point here? Well, what will happen is you'll see that, since we're mindful of our x and y coordinates, I've actually made a right triangle here. So you can see a little right angle right there. And we know this must be a right angle because, again, we're on a coordinate plane. Here's our x and here is our y, and x and y are always at right angles to one another. And in the unit circle, we're always going to be dealing with this angle interior, like what angle this radius forms relative to this rightward facing x-axis. So this right here, you might say it's like 60, maybe even 45 degrees. If I had drawn a line way down here, you know, let's say that this was all the way over here was 300 degrees. That's how we're going to measure that angle. It's all that whenever we're doing degree measures with unit circles, it's always in here. Another way we could talk about this is just going to the left here, but that would make this negative 60 degrees because, again, we're working with this 360 degree period here where, where when we get all the way around, we basically just repeat ourselves because, again, like with any circle, if it rotates, it's effectively unchanged because it's in the back to the same place that it was. So now let's think about how that applies to our trigonometric properties. So if I were to just draw this right here and to once again make a right angle, let's say we do a 30 degree angle right here. And when you hear 30 right there, and it's in the context of a right angle, your ear should prick up and you should be reminded of, I think the very first video we ever posted on uh, this channel, which is the 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. And you know that must be 90. And so this is if this is 30, that means that the other side up here is 60. And again, this one up here is not something we're ever really going to worry about. But now we know the sides of this triangle relative to one another. So this would be our 2x, x, and x root 3. And this would tell us that if we wanted to know what the the sine of 30 degrees was, we could see that it's the opposite over the hypotenuse, the opposite here being root 3, 
and the hypotenuse being two. Now, this is very sensible and okay because we're still in a triangle with a regular sounding angle, but what if we kept going with our angle and instead of stopping here, we went all the way over here to 150. And this is interesting because what that effectively is, is it's basically mirrored, you can see. This would be our going back 30 degrees from this way. And that means that this is still a root three, and this is still one of our x's, and this is two x. But, and remember, we're on an accordant plane here, so this is just negative, because it's to the left. Anything to the left of the y-axis is negative, anything to the right is positive. And same thing, if we'd actually done the same thing down there, so that would be 180 plus 30, so this would be 210 degrees, then this would be negative x root 3 along this direction, and then it would be negative x down this way, and the hypotenuse will always be positive, because, you know, what would a negative hypotenuse look like in a circle? I don't know. I don't think that's possible. So effectively, this is our context for the unit circle. It's just spinning a radius around. And wherever we land is where we start doing our x and y coordinates uh, for our trig properties. And that means that, and we can see here pretty clearly that this is our interior measure here. The x dimension is always going to be our adjacent, because look at it, it's next to the angle. And the y is always going to be the opposite because look at it, it's opposite of the angle. And at this point, you usually start to hear this talk of quadrants in unit circle. And, you know, this is the first quadrant. This is the second one. This is the third one. This is the fourth one. And that's almost useful because this sort of tells you where we're looking. But the thing is, and here's where the overcomplicating part starts to happen is, Teachers will often say, well, sine is always positive for this and this quadrant, and cosine is always negative. And I just don't think that's particularly useful to memorize. I think, really, as long as you just draw an axis and then say, okay, well, we know what these angle measures are. This is, you know, 0 to 90, because it's the right angle. This is another 90 degrees, so that's 180 right there. It also tracks with the idea of a straight line being 180 degrees. And then over to here, we have 270, because that's 180 plus 90. And we get back to 360, and then we're just back to the start, and we can keep cycling through multiples of 360, and it's really not that complicated, right? So as long as you make a good drawing, you can look at it. You don't need to remember what property is what sign at what quadrant, because it's really not that useful if you understand the concept in general, let's say. And then next little thing here, this is where uh, we're also going to uh, introduce another unit of measuring rotation. So... We've talked about degrees so far, but now we're going to talk about radians. And I sort of hinted at this earlier when I mentioned that one spin, one rotation around the circle, all the whole distance around, is equal to the circumference, because the distance, the perimeter of a circle is just the circumference, and that's what happens when we spin around it. So basically what we're saying is 360 degrees, that rotation is the same thing as rotating perimeter of the circle, which is 2 pi r. And with this in mind, we introduce our new unit of measure, which is the radian. Which makes sense because it's just how much are we spinning the radius is the unit of measure here. So we can then see, and, and it emerges, that 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees. So that's to say that if we reduce a little bit, do a little bit of algebra here, we divide by 2, that's pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. And that's our converting factor. I'm also going to keep this really simple because I also think this is overtaught. When you want to convert one to the other, all you need to know that 180 degrees is pi radians. So if you wanted to know how many radians 540 degrees was, we just divide that by 180 and put pi in front of it, and that would be how many radians it is. And if you needed to resolve some fractions there, you know, if it were something like, this is not the same thing, but if it was like 3 pi over 2, so that's 270, because 180 divided by 2 times 3 is 270 degrees. And that's really just our converting factor. Uh, often people ask me why there would be two units here. And I would say, for the most part, it would just be for when we get into a lot of turns. So 360 degrees is okay, but if we did 100 turns or like 130 turns, that would start to get to be a bit of an unwieldy number if we needed to multiply that by 180, as opposed to 2 pi r, where it's just that number times 2 with a pi in front of it. So it 
looks a little better with a high number of terms, but generally they're pretty much the same thing. So it should be pretty easy for you to convert from one to the other. Okay, so no way to learn like application. So let's take a look at a couple of practice problems here and see what you can do. Go ahead and try the first one. Okay, let's look at the first one. So this kind of question is the most frequent way that the ACT or really the SAT can test on unit circle. And the first time you see it, it might be a little confusing, but really it's very okay. So the first thing we always do with unit circle is just make an axis and say, all right, where are we? We have 180 is less than x is less than 270. So we're in there and all we do is do that. And they say that x is equal to negative three over five, which is that's uh, over h right there. So this is our three, four, five triangle clearly. So this is a five, and that's a three, which is clearly negative and that's a negative four. And then once again, a call back to our special triangles video, go and watch that one. We have not yet seen it because it is E central. And from then we're in pretty good shape. We just say the tangent of what equals over A, O being negative three and A being negative four. So that's just three over four. Pretty okay when you know what you're doing. All right, we've got our second practice problem now. The student of you will have noticed that I changed out the question that was the second. Uh, in the space between doing the first and second problem, that would be because I've decided to save that question for the trigonometric waves video, which will come out in the future. So spoilers for that question, but let's go ahead and try this one instead. All right, let's take a look. So we're now between pi and pi over two and pi, which is right here. And so we're doing cosine being adjacent negative five over 13, so 13 right there negative five right there. And this is the five to 13, which I've not drawn the scale on purpose just because it doesn't really matter. And now we're going to say, what's the sine of X? So opposite of our hypotenuse, pretty okay, 12 over 13. And there we go. So really not that bad. Okay, that's it for this video. Remember with unit circle, it's just a circle that happens to be placed on a coordinate plane where the X dimension is the adjacent and the Y element is the opposite in our right triangle. And then the hypotenuse is just the radius. So if you keep that in mind and always make a good drawing, unit circle shouldn't really be that bad, at least not on these tests. Anyway, if you found this material useful, we hope that you will like and share the video and subscribe to Quad Education. If you require any kind of tutoring, please reach out to us. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.